Hey there, everybody. Now, I'm sure if you asked most people in America, you know, I'd be willing to actually bet money that if you asked most people in America, they would say in order to become rich, you need to have financial ingenuity, economic ingenuity, a genius for increasing efficiency, hard work, education, all these things. But a Warren says, all the rich people, they get rich off. Who doesn't love Elizabeth Warren, right? Now, we've already heard Elizabeth Warren started to be talking about in the same reverent tone progressives reserve for people like Bernie Sanders. And she's running for Senate in Massachusetts against Scott Brown, who's of course no panacea, but Elizabeth Warren would be worse, and that, you can tell that by this one quote. And the progressive left has been going insane over this quote. I mean, ironically, moveon.org can't move on from this. They call it, let's see. Uh, the Elizabeth Warren quote, every American needs to see. Alright, so they obviously have a very high opinion of this statement. I've heard this argument made before, and I'm not convinced by it, and I hope by the end of this, you won't be convinced either. So here's the statement. Um, there was nobody in this country who got rich on his own. Nobody. You built a factory out there. Good for you. But I want to be clear. You moved your goods to market on roads the rest of us paid for. You hired workers the rest of us paid to educate. You were safe in your factory because of police forces and fire forces that the rest of us paid for. You didn't have to worry that marauding bands would come and seize everything at your factory. Now look, you built a factory and turned it into uh, something terrific or a great idea. God bless. Keep a big hunk of it. But part of the underlying shill contract is that you pay a hunk of it forward for the next kid who comes along. And to start out, I just want to make a little uh, economic analogy that's very related to this. Um, let's say in pre-colonial America, we took 10 individuals, gave them each $100, and put them out into the wilderness to grow their wealth and whatnot. Uh, let's say that they all had about the same amount of resources before them, and they could do whatever they wanted with the money. We would see, if we came back after 10 years, say, that those people still would have income inequality. Some would be richer, some would be poorer, some would be just, you know, just about the same. And the reason that is, is that there's natural inequalities in humans, so even if they were given each a certain amount of set resources, some of them would become richer over time, some of them would become poorer. And that's the basic fallacy behind this argument, because the rich and the poor all have equal access to roads, they all have equal access to fire and police forces, they all have equal access to public schools. A large amount of it would just be inputs of your own, hard work, natural talents. So this whole fallacy about the rich, you know, they're just swooping in, they're like dragons, eating the maiden of tax dollars and getting out of themselves. Um, it's just a fallacy. If poor people have an equal opportunity to use the roads as rich people, they actually already use them to get to work every day to earn their own wages. There's already a reason that the poor should help pay for the roads and policemen and firefighters. And also, um, if the poor were producing a product that was largely demanded to be shipped across the country, they would have an equal opportunity to use the roads too. So really, it's just a fallacy, and it could actually be used as an argument for the flat tax rate. A couple more quick things. Um, she, she keeps talking about it like, we paid for it, and you're reaping the rewards. Like, the, it's the basic kind of Marxist notion that, you know, the proletariat does all the work, and the bourgeoisie reap, uh, reap the profit. You know, the poor middle class have paid for these roads and the rich people are just getting richer off them. No, the rich people actually pay the majority of tax dollars in this country. And um, you might say, oh, well, the poor pay sales tax, which goes locally to build roads and stuff. Yeah, but I mean, under our current system where now a lot of building of roads is centralized in Washington, uh, the rich people definitely do pay a majority of it. Still, the sales tax rate it won't be as large as like the property tax rate, especially in New Hampshire where I live, where it's a just like a huge property tax rate. To fund highways nationally, 
So you can't, it's, it's, you can't really say no, oh, the rich people, they just are, they're holding on to too much of those resources while the poor people pay all the taxes. No, the large chunk of, chunk of their diamond is being taken to pay for the roads and bridges and firefighters and whatever everyone uses. So, you know, she already has made several flaws and she completely ignores the benefits the rich pay to society, such as providing employment so people can make money and then pay taxes for roads and bridges and firefighters. Let alone the way that rich businessmen provide economic growth. She, she's just looking at a very incomplete picture and unless you look at the whole picture, you get a very um, biased look at the situation. And if you see it, through that lens, well, it looks perfectly clear. But if you try to look at it from another angle, soon you'll find out it's kind of falls apart, this whole argument. Anyway, I think it's a fallacy. I've heard it before. I'm still not convinced. And, well, Elizabeth Warren's running for Senate against Scott Brown of Massachusetts. And Scott Brown, by no means, is a panacea. He is, he's a rhino, to be frank. He voted for health care and whatnot. But, better than Obama, I mean, it's true. But we should still try to uh, select a strong conservative leader. But in this case, in the land of liberal Massachusetts, it might be better just to go with Scott Brown because at least he'll be a little less damaging to our country than Elizabeth Warren. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope I've kind of convinced you that that argument isn't quite the wonder kind, uh, revealing, all-powerful argument that the progressive left has made it seem like. And, uh, well, anyway, I guess I'll see you in the next video. I would derive great pleasure if you subscribed at your leisure.